Welcome into the official. If you didn't catch kind of the first part of this week's series, we're actually doing a series Monday, Wednesday, Friday of this week. Go back and watch Monday's video. We introduced this idea of the QB athleticism score, which is something we've been working on at the official for quite some time now and finally boiled down to a distinct number that we think helps project ultimate college fantasy scores, but really also ultimate NFL draft and production potential. Uh, and you can use this number even on high school QBs, juniors, seniors, incoming freshmen. And we think that this really is a helpful tool to project future classes. So guys, let's open it right up here. And we are going to do uh, the 2023 freshman class. So these are guys who are rising second year guys. And, you know, a little bit of it is going to be hindsight. But David, walk us through, this is that 2023 class. And, you know, what, what are you seeing here? And does this make sense to you? And are there any QBs that we're looking at with this athleticism score that you would have been like, man, if I would have known for sure that number, I would have ranked him different. Yeah. So after like the big five of that recruiting class, which I think it was, what is it? Nico, Arch, Dante Moore, yep. um, Jackson Excellent. Arnold. Yeah. I don't know. And then... Malachi. Was Malachi Nelson, right. So those yeah. are the top five that pretty, I'm pretty sure every service had, had those five guys in a certain order. And then after that, I, I just put sell. I think I had leave. I think I had Sam leave it and then sellers, although I had sellers for a while, but whatever. So the, I basically, that was a bet on, we didn't know, we didn't have the model where it's at now, but those are the guys that looked the traitsiest to me. Um, they're, you know, I believe in sellers quite a bit. Leave it. Um, I don't really. I don't, Arizona State kind of kind of stinks or whatever, but he's got decent traits to like maybe make something happen. So, but as far and then after that, yeah, it's just like okay, JJ Cole. He's he's like big. He's got a big arm. I think his multi. size and arm. I don't know what his like multi sport was, but he he had the biggest arm I think in the class. So that probably got him some points. Yeah, that definitely helps him in that regard. I I don't really believe in him but i'm just so Ar you'd, you'd wish arnold was a little bit higher i suppose cal swanson's a guy we liked as well so i think the interesting thing here like, on the bottom side of things is just dante moore is just egregious in this and i just i don't know i kind of thought he was like a savant in some respects because he started varsity as like a eighth grader and all this stuff and he was just he won multiple state championships was uber productive and all and everything i i think partly is he was like he um he like physically matured early too which definitely helped i think and he sort of got a little bit tapped out i feel like uh but only a one sport guy and his arm is just we kind of always thought his arm was fringe um so that's not that's a little concerning as well so he's a guy that i probably just would have and i contemplated it at the time too but i probably just would have had him in like a tier three most likely and then Holstein was a guy who literally broke the spark score record at the elite 11 regional. Like, uh, I don't even know, like 130 or something like that. And I was like, I don't know. I'm watching this guy. He just doesn't seem athletic to me. I'm, I'm like, I don't know what to say. He just seems clunky. We, we talked about that on the, I think the Las Vegas regional. We thought he had cement brick feet. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, we talked about it on the recap show that year. Um, but yeah, he's like, He's a he was a one sport guy as well. Um, his arm is really not even that good. He didn't chart well for me either. Actually, it's kind of funny because like the the guys that charted the best, I think I believe were Sellers and Sam Leavitt, which is kind of weird that it coincides with the athleticism thing. But uh, anyways, I, I won't be too long here. I think Arch is the one thing we just need to we need to get an updated ball velocity on him because right now he's at fifty one. We we want to see fifty four. I figured he'd be around 54 when it's all said and done. So it's just, we need to see him out there playing and then hopefully get a better register on that. Uh, so hopefully he gets a boost in the end and we just don't have much on Nico. So, and Malachi, yeah. I think was like Malachi's 41st percentile, I think. And he's in a battle right now with mad dog Maddox Madsen <laughs> at Boise state. So that's like, concerning as well so it's like this class we thought was like kind of stacked it's like they're just dropping like flies right now so it's tricky man it's it's tricky i feel like i like sellers and then i'm just like i'm kind of nervous for the rest of them honestly 
Yeah, it checks out. And I think this athleticism score, it just paints such a different picture. I mean, Dante Moore was a top three guy. There were people at Campus Kansas thought he was QB1. Um, and I th- what I'm taking from a lot of this is, hey, if your favorite QB on tape is, is one of these guys on the, on the right-hand side, just really rethink some things. Because we look at tape, you're just looking at their football, but there's a lot more that goes into it. We talked about the athleticism score. Again, go check out the other video. But, you know, it, it's it's multi-sport. It's agility. It's, um, you know, ball velocity, which goes into a lot of this. And so some of these guys have kind of noodles. Like you said, Arch Manning, 51. That's not even really average. You want to see at least 52, really into the mid-50s. Um, and so... I don't know. I think it's really helpful to be like, there's a re and Gio Lopez, another guy who was a, you know, G five guy. We liked, I liked, I know I did. And now he's having a really weird off season. And I think he's kind of in a battle for South Alabama's starting job. Um, when he was looking like he would be the starter. So these guys just seem to fizzle, um, you know, and the guys on the right-hand side here, Jackson Arnold, Maybe not a high-end NFL guy, but I think he can definitely be productive in college. Cal Swanson is still at 75-9. Like when you when you boil it down to a single class, it drops off quick. You had two guys, maybe NFL potential, high-end NFL potential. After that, you're probably looking at backups for the most part. Um, I think if J.J. Cole had NFL potential, he would at least be making some kind of noise. Uh, but he's behind Rocco Beck at Iowa State. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, Matt, any thoughts on this class? I mean, is there any hindsight you'd look back and be like, man, I should have known? Um, no, maybe not too much hindsight. I, I will say I think Arch, uh, I'm not really too worried about it. I do think he'll probably be you know, well within at least average range of ball velocity by the time uh, we can measure him again. You know, I imagine he'll be mid-50s at least, uh, which I imagine will probably launch a score up to mid-80s by the time he's in the NFL draft. So. I'm not too worried about him, but everyone else, I mean, yeah, it's not looking great. Jackson Arnold, you know, probably looking like one of the better of that group, uh, and but I, I still just don't love his uh, ceiling necessarily. Uh, if he is a first-round pick, it, it profiles as a low-end one, if that. So, uh, well, you know, it's so. really, it's really it's- hard to bet anybody here to be an early uh, NFL pick, uh, other than Arch, I guess, just on the main value. Well, I think Jackson Arnold, I mean, I guess if his ball velo jumps up a little, because I think he had kind of mid-range, if he gains a mile an hour or two, maybe he gets up into a, a better score, like in the same way that Arch could. I think Sellers is a guy, and you know, that's what we've been saying at campus to Canton all summer. Sellers is a guy who could go Cam Newton. Sellers is a guy who could go A. Richardson on the landscape and then headed into year three, be like, I mean, he he could take a quantum leap this year. Um, and he's got the physical traits. If he has a decent year, good completion percentage and looks good out there, I think he could be like a fast, fast riser uh, out of this class. All right. So we are going to go here and look at the 2024 class. So these are going to be current, uh, current freshmen. And I have to say, this also doesn't paint the most rosy picture of of these guys in this class i mean there's if you look at it not a lot of easy to see nfl potential um dj lagway not hard to know there 96.6 he's got all the things you want to see go gators and then you have hoss haney who i know david i feel like he was maybe the first one to bring him up uh little spark plug but a smaller guy He's scoring high here based on all the things, but the one thing he lacks is size. Kind of hard to project NFL. And then I'm going to give it to Matt here. Then we got a G5 guy. And then that's where the 90% drops off. We got three guys, Lagway, a small guy, and a G5 guy. Matt, what are your hopes for Jaden Glasser? I know you have liked him um, all along. Are you hoping for a P4 upgrade at some point here? He's got the traits for uh-huh. I mean, yeah, I mean, I got to. But, uh, you know, obviously going to G5 to begin with, it's hard to uh, have too high of a hope just because, you know, the odds of him being drafted at that point are uh, pretty low. So you just got to hope for the transfer out uh, and, you know, early playing time if he does get it. 
Um, and then you got Blake Barnett headed to Kansas State, going to be behind Avery Johnson, but scores actually higher than Avery Johnson on the athletic score. Um, Walker White, we like him at Auburn for potential there. Then we have some, I mean, there are some big time red flags in, in the 2024 class. Guys rated very high. David, I'm going to throw it to you because you don't like talking bad about guys. So I'm going to put you on the spot. But like, what are we thinking with Dylan Rail? I mean, he is going 102, sometimes 101 in freshman drafts. Yeah, I think part of that is because he's projected to start, start as a freshman. Um, yeah, I think he's just, I don't know, he's, He's not super. He, I didn't ever really thought he was super athletic. Like he had negative rushing yards for his career in high school, which is kind of a red flag in itself. Uh, he is a big dude though, um, with a big arm. I've just been. I I could never put him in my. He ended up in my tier two. Uh, I couldn't really get there with him, and I actually put. I pushed lag. Lagway was my only tier one quarterback. But yeah, some of these other guys. It's just. I mean, we already know Demond Williams is just a college guy anyway, so that's fine. Um, Hoss Haney, yeah, he's he pops hard because, you know, a five-sport guy or whatever, and he's, like, really – he hits 21.7 miles per hour, runs, like, four or five. Or, so, like, he's just a bet on the college side. He's super small, but he would fit – so, like, other guys, like, comparable to, to him or whatever would be, like, kind of like a Stetson Bennett – is pretty high. Jaron Hall is pretty high. Thomas Castellanos is like a 90 guy. So those are guys that have potential to crush the college side, but like any reasonable person knows that he's probably not going to be an NFL dude. So, um, but yeah, CJ Carr and Julian Sand Sand are ranked really high. Um, in I think some in five stars on some of the industry rankings. And those guys, I just don't know. I just don't know. I never really thought they were super traitsy to me. Um, I don't know. Maybe they just have like insane brains or whatever, and they're just going to be, I don't know, the ultimate like uh, game manager type guy. I don't really know. So I think those guys are, maybe they'll get a boost along the way and we'll get more data on those guys. And they'll, it's just really, they're so far down. It's just, it's, it's going to be tough to see them really shooting up into, into the eighties where we want to see. So yeah, not great for those dudes. Um, but yeah, I think yeah, it's, it's a huge red flag. I mean, Dylan Raiola, you you could maybe talk yourself into it. Um, Julian saying he's toast. I think he's toast. I mean, I just – and I, I saw him – I recently just saw him go 104. I mean, it was uh, Jeremiah Smith and then three QBs in a row in a freshman draft. It was Lagway, Raiola, Sayan. Uh, I think that's going to continue to be the trend. I want no part of it. Uh, you know, he's just, he's got kind of a noodle. He's not super athletic. Like, and then he doesn't score with any of these other metrics we've talked about. I think it's fool's gold. And I, you know, this is important. I honestly, more than anything else, I think it's important to avoid guys like Julian saying, uh, unfortunately, I mean, I hope somehow he breaks the curse and he's like a guy, but it just seems like that's not the case. If you like what we're doing here on the official like, and subscribe to this video, and comment on other guys that you want to know what their score is. We'll let you know in the comments.